if you haven't like heard, know that God speaks to you exactly how you need to be spoken to, meaning he knows how he created you. He knows the life circumstances you've gone through, and he knows the perfect way and manner and language and tone Mm -hmm. and, and way of speaking to you for you to receive it. Yeah. So know that everybody's relationship with Jesus, um, why it might have the same foundations looks uniquely different. The same as mine and Satrice's relationship is different than mine and Lauren's and very different than mine and Matt's, (laughs) my (laughs) husband. (laughs) Today on the Messy Faith Podcast. Hello, 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 ladies. This is the Messy Faith Podcast because life is messy, but God already paid the maid. I'm Emily. And I'm Cetricia. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. I wish I wish I could I wish I like speaking in Hebrew or Sprechen Sie Deutsch. Is that German? It sounds like it. (laughs) It sounds like it. Uh, Anyway. Uh, We're excited to be with you guys, whether you're doing laundry, on a commute, uh, working remote, washing dishes, changing a poopy diaper, laying in the bed, laying in the bed. (laughs) Okay. Um, We're here to have a conversation. So, Tricia, what are we talking about today? We are talking about hearing from God. Mm -mm -mm. That is a big topic. Yes. Right? Like, how the heck do you hear from God? Does he like audibly speak? What happens if I don't hear from him? Yeah. You know, like there's like so much here. Uh, we're not going to hit all of it, but we're just going to start the conversation. Yeah. Um, and so if you guys have any questions or comments, you can um, email us or chime down in the comments below and we will chat with you, try and answer those. Um, so, Tricia, Yeah. What are some of the ways <laughs> that we can hear from God? Like what do we know for a fact from the big B-I-B-L-E? God speaks audibly, like an audible voice, like you can literally hear it. Like before Amazon? Before. (laughs) Yes, before Amazon. (laughs) Get it? Audible. Audibly. (laughs) Okay. We can hear God through the Bible, through his word. We can hear God through other people. Mm -hmm. We can hear God through sometimes even a knowing, like a stillness. Like the Holy Spirit? Yeah, the the Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. in and then the- I think the last one is um, through Jesus. Jesus. Big J-E-S-U-S-C. Did J-E-S-U-S-C. I spell it right? J-E-S-U-S has blessed me. <laughs> that's, like, that's the song uh, I used to sing. <laughs> so <clears throat> I think those are the four, the four main ways. The first being through his word, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and then people. Yeah. So before we dive into all the stuff... Do you have, first we'll do a normal one. Okay. <laughs> like a normal, like you heard from God. Mm-hmm. And then I want to hear like a weird, crazy time or a crazy thing that mm. you heard God. Normal. Um, I'm like, there's so, how do I, what do I choose? Um, I would say through and knowing like the Holy Spirit will tell me something. And then I read the Bible and there's a scripture that says the same thing. And I'm like, I know that that was, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. He gave so, you like a, a knowing and then like a rhema word. Yes. I I feel like through the word is kind of the most common way. Um, or I would say the Holy Spirit too. Maybe it's a tie neck and neck between those two. Gotcha. So yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'll share my crazy one first mm-hmm. because sometimes, and if you haven't, if you haven't like heard, know that God speaks to you exactly how you need to be spoken to, meaning he knows how he created you. He knows the life circumstances you've gone through and he knows the perfect way and manner and language and tone mm-hmm. and, and way of speaking to you for you to receive it. Yeah. So know that everybody's relationship with Jesus, um, why it might have the same foundations looks uniquely different, the same as for sure. Mine and Satrice's relationship is different than mine and Lauren's and very different than mine and Matt's, mm-hmm. <laughs> my <I> husband. <laughs> yes. Um, and so just, just know that if you hear anything we're saying, it's okay if God has never talked to you that way. Yeah. Um, and to just desire a unique way to be spoken to. Yeah. Um, so I just want to give some freedom there and, and, and let's set down any comparisons yes. moving forward in the conversation. Yes. Okay. Also note that sometimes when you hear from God, 
and he tells you to do something that you don't always get to know why mm -hmm. or the fruit of it. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like a random obedience and you have no idea the instrument you played or linchpin moment you might have played in somebody's life. For so sure. an, an example of this is, it's probably like 10 years ago, I was at a big giant women's event. Oh, it was probably like 15 years ago, actually. Mm. Oh no, I'm getting old. Mm. <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. It was a long, long time ago <laughs> in a land not so far away <laughs> in a con in an auditorium full of women. Um, and I, I, Thought the speaker was super rad. We were doing worship, and I just I'm in the I'm in the kind of the back, um, and the speaker usually stands like up at the front on the edge, right, so they can get on the stage easy with, without a big uh, fuss. Anyway, I felt in my spirit that I was supposed to go pray for her, and mm. I'm like, Lord, I do not want to be the crazy lady <laughs> that just wants to go talk to the popular speaker. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. You mm -hmm. know those people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds bad. I'm not judging anybody, but I'm just saying I didn't want I, you. <laughs> I didn't want to be that person. So I fought it. Mm -hmm. I fought it so bad. I waited till I waited for the first worship song. I waited for the second worship song. And then I kid you not, there was a physical sensation of having to pee my pants. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, I am not moving. Like I froze. Mm -hmm. Um, and so to fight that freezing, like little little argument with God. Uh, I literally, he literally put the sensation to like, I was going to, my bladder was going to explode. Hmm. And so I was like, uh, this is awkward. Cause I'm having like physical, <laughs> uh -huh. physical reaction here. Mm -hmm. So then I moved out and I was like, well, I'm already out in the aisle. Might as well go pray for her. And for I'm it. like walking and I'm like shaking <laughs> one. Cause I'm nervous. Cause I'm going to be seen as the chick that's uh -huh. brain over the thing. <laughs> And I had no idea what I was even supposed to pray for her about. Mm -hmm. I walked up to her and I was like, I really feel led to pray for you. And she was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And so I just prayed for her. And I literally just prayed in tongues because I had absolutely no idea what I was supposed to pray. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. Mm -hmm. And then that sensation of having to pee went away. Mm -hmm. Bizarre. Yes. Have no idea where she is at in life. For sure. That you, was it. You imparted something. <laughs> That was Good thing it. it wasn't wet jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. So then now uh, I guess a supernatural one, right? You said a regular one. And then um, I've heard the audible voice of God. What? Yes. And it was, I seen Jesus as a light and my whole body, it was like, how do I describe it? It was like my whole vi body vibrated and it was like, Inside, I was just vibrating. And then the Lord, because I was at a prayer meeting and the Lord was like saying like what to pray in this moment and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But my whole body literally was vibrating to the point where even when the meeting was over, it still was happening and I couldn't drive home. So some of the staff had to drive me home. And even the next day, it was so still heavy on me, like just this vibration and I had to pray. I was like, Lord, how am I going to function if this doesn't lift off of me? Because literally everything was just like, it was like electricity or like a just all through my body. And I just cried and I, okay, Lord. And I just was praying. I was declaring things, but I heard his voice audibly say, like, ask me, ask me and I'll do what you ask me. And it was in regard of what, like the prayer point of what we were praying for. And it was some things that God had like prophesied before that we were believing for. And so then I just started declaring those things. And so, but yeah, that was like one of the Ooh. most, like no matter what happens in life, I know without a shadow of doubt of a doubt that God is real, that he's present and that he's able. And so that was like one of the craziest experiences. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. really cool. We'll be super excited to hear maybe how God has spoken to you in big or small or awkward ways. Yeah. Um, okay. So what does it mean? What do you think it means when, um, cause I think we can lessen the word. Sometimes mm -hmm. everybody wants to crave for that. I want God to speak to me. Yes. Like yeah. to me personally now for now, mm -hmm. you know, and we kind of push off the power and relevancy and aliveness, because the Bible said his word is alive, mm -hmm. of the word. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? My mind was thinking about another experience. 
Oh, another experience. So, I was like, I was, the Lord just talks to Seti in so many ways all the time. Man, praise Go God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead and share that. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of like all kind of visitations and things like, like I've seen angels. I've like gone to heaven, like all kind of like crazy what? things. What? You got so my I'm eyebrow like, going like, <laughs> What? What the Christian are you talking about? So, yeah, no, these different experiences. But this was a time where I was really, not to say I'm not on fire now, but life circumstances are just different. I, had, I It was before I had kids and all before that Before you were jaded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too. just kidding. Sorry. That too. We're being real, though, folks. You know, life weighs on you sometimes. Yeah. You just have to adjust it, kind of like your bra. You got to adjust that. You got to adjust it. Sometimes no, you I had a lot adjust. more free time. Oh, okay. So, and okay, and I go. was spending all of my free time in pursuit of, knowing the Holy Spirit, knowing the Lord and just hearing his voice. Gotcha. And so because of that, like that was, that's how I spent my, my life and my day. That was my life's pursuit in that season. Um, God for sure. And I think he did it because he's so gracious. I think he did it to give me stamps of like, I know that I know what it without a shadow of, of a doubt yeah. that God is real and that he's able because I think he knew all that I would like encounter and come in contact with throughout these years and the different people that I needed a certain level of faith to, to do what he's called me to do. And so, Ooh. yeah. So I think it wasn't that I'm just so grand and so great, yeah. but I think he did that to equip me for what he knew he was setting me up for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cause just hearing you say that being somebody um, who has been in church since, um, you know, I was three years old whenever I went to, you know, my parents now, whenever I started living with them, I've been going to church. And at times in my life, I was like, not that I'm not on fire now, mm -hmm. but like, uh, like you said, the time and the focus was just so pinpoint mm -hmm. um, and different that sometimes I find myself comparing my past experiences with Jesus to measure how mature I see myself as, yes. or somehow I've lost some sort of, I've lost my wisdom. I've lost that fire. I'm not on fire, but I'm not comparing to anybody else. I'm comparing to Your my own. past experiences. Yeah. And sometimes I still, I still fight that. And I think kind of what I, what I have learned and through hearing you say that is I just, I guess I'm saying to you, instead of like going through the hard time, like I did and, and being totally harsh on yourself and saying you're a horrible Christian is just everything in its season. And you said it so beautifully that, that God was like that in that season because you needed it. Mm -hmm. You were at a point in your development where if you didn't hear from him at this time, at this level, the root wouldn't have gone deep enough. Yeah. And just like I said in the beginning, he knows exactly how to talk to you. Yes. It's like he spoke to you in a manner in which mm -hmm. Satricia passion would never, de never not, never think that God was not real. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And able, um, because I feel like it comes in waves. Like, because even like you said, I, there's times where I'm like, Lord, if I, if it could just be like how it was then. Yeah. Yeah. But there's things in this season that I've gained, um, through the mundane, you know, that have added to the foundation of like what my relationship is with God that that I need for the journey moving forward too. And I think each season teaches us something. And so when we we were in the season that's not as fiery or not as like stirred up, there's things that we learn in the mundane too on how to keep when you don't hear his voice, how to continue to press and believe God when things are moving slow, when things are not electrifying and things are not like yeah. supernaturally like blowing you out of the water, how to still believe God, how to still press, how to stay consistent you know, in your relationship with God, when you're reading your word and you're not getting that super revelation where you're like, aha, he's speaking so clear when you're not, you know, getting that, are you still going to be consistent? Are you still going to pursue me? So I think each season there's something we're pulling out of it, you know, that is necessary for our life and godliness and even something we gain, you know, as a tool to help other people too. But it's not, I don't think it's all supposed to just be electrifying because yeah you know, then it's like, we need that to now have a relationship with God. And if we don't have that, then, you know. Oh my gosh, I'm laughing because while you were saying all of that, I was literally comparing it to sex. 
No, no, just go with me. Just In go true with Emily me. fashion. Just Let's go with Let's me. Let's hear it. Because okay. you're like all riled up. You know, oh. it's like you can't be in the state of climax. <laughs> For your entire life. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> but I guess it's intimacy. We're talking Exa- about intimacy. Exa- okay, I'm I going am. there see, with you. See, I have I logical you. Okay. grounding for this. Okay, I'm with right? you. And, okay. and, I'll be and, mature. Okay. Thank you. Jeez, mm-hmm. where are you going with your dirty mind? <laughs> no, but I'm serious. Because a relationship, like with my husband, like we were, we were best friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, we still are. Like he still is my best friend. For sure. Right? But like, um, like there's like... I lost my train of thought. Sorry. You, you were talking about the buildup and maybe yeah. <laughs> going like before you were best friends, before you were married and having sex. So, so there's to... more aspects to a relationship than just having sex. Yes. Yeah. And yes, have sex often and as many times as you can. Like mm-hmm. those are cool goals. Do all that. For sure. But I think the same is true um, with our relationship with Jesus. Mm-hmm. We need to be able to sit in traffic with him. Yeah. We need to be able to sit with him while the kids are screaming, Mm -hmm. but we can still go out on a date and we can still there. I know now it's getting weird, but you know, you know what I'm saying? You can be heightened at certain times. And I think what I'm trying to say is that the picture of marriage, including a sexual relationship is, I don't know if it's proper or improper, but it's a good reflection of the ebbs and flows with God. Because it's intimacy. Exactly. And we build that in different ways. Intimacy is not only yeah, that's in the bedroom. A, that's a better non-perverted way to say it, probably. <laughs> it's intimacy. We all should be pursuing intimacy with God in our relationship with him. And that doesn't just show up when it's time for the electrifying things. It shows up in the times where we have to be patient. It shows up in the times where we feel disappointed. Yeah. It shows up in the times where we're just like, blah, you exactly. know, it shows up in all those times. We still have to pursue intimacy regardless of how electrifying it is or it isn't. Exactly. Um, and I think to s- a good place to go after talking about this is that. Um... I have a good place to go. Okay. And um, we, we mentioned we were talking about it a little bit before, but. Um, even just like intimacy, our relationship with God is built up like in hearing from him, the ability to hear from him is, is increased as we spend time with him. Yes. It's increased as we obey him. It's increased. Our sensitivity. Yeah. Yes. That's the word. Yes. Yeah. Our sensitivity. Right. So there is a, there is. Just like, just like <laughs> sex. Just like. It's as you're, you know, it's built up and then it's more, you know, but go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I brought you over to the dark I did, side. You did. <laughs> but intimacy, you said um, it's, it's built up. Yeah. Like our sensitivity. That's what you're going. Yeah. Yeah. Our sensitivity. Um, because so we know that, that Jesus, um, we can hear through Jesus. And I, I feel like what it means by that is literally the words of Jesus in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, what he says about us and what he has done for us. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if we accept Jesus as our Lord and savior and profess with our, you know, confess our sins um, and put him as Lord and savior over our life, then we are set free. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing, neither height nor depth, nor all the other Norths Mm -hmm. that can keep (laughs) us or separate us from the love of God. Yeah. Right. So, So I have heard some people be like, well, I'm sinning. So I can't hear from God. And so this is, again, we're not theologians. We're just women loving Jesus doing life together. Mm. Um, So there is definitely room for like correction and theological stuff. Go do the studies on your own, on, on, on your own time. But I'm going to speak from like my experience and my biblical knowledge. Um, And there's a lot of gray in there because I think that, that sometimes grace is gray. Mm -hmm. Our human minds sometimes don't really understand grace and mercy. And so it can seem gray to us, but the reason it can be gray is because we were not put in the position to judge other people. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. Exactly. And we reminding ourselves that we are not in a place to judge ourselves Mm -hmm. in, in a, in a negative sense. There's a difference between Mm self-awareness and growing as opposed to judgment and condemnation for maybe a struggle or to, temptation or an actual outright sin yes and so um it's like you have to hold all these things and it's even though it is super simple like i said there's gray Mm -hmm. and um if you're sinning can you still hear from god is the question and i think that's that's um that question is too sharp i think if there we go because you can be sinning but be struggling with the sin 
Like, I think there's levels. I think there's a point in our walk where we want to do better, but we're still struggling with it. So, I mean, we would technically classify as like actively sinning, but then there's one where we're given over to sin. That's different. And I think when we're given over to sin, then there's a veil that can be, or I guess veil <laughs> or headphones. Scales put on the myers or the ears. On your ears that affect your ability to hear from it. It's not like he's not talking, but I think it it affects our ability to hear when we're given over to sin. And Meaning, but, so uh, probably. Like when uh, I've just submitted to it. Exactly. So not so, struggling uh, with it. Yeah, yeah. But so submitted. I would like to say it in this language. Yeah. I'm a stickler. Go ahead, say it. When you choose the sin over Jesus. Yeah. Like that, you know, like the straw that broke the camel's back. Like you have chosen. I've and submitted. So I'm you've lit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> fine. Fine. <laughs> so you've submitted. You've chosen mm-hmm. to live yeah. this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then I think, yeah, you can be affected versus I'm struggling with this. This is a sin. It's something I'm not delivered fully from yet but I'm still in pursuit of God. On yeah. yeah. And I want to make it clear that like Jesus, he's um, omnipotent. I think that's the right one where he's all like, he can be everywhere. Omnipresent. <laughs> yeah, right. Omnipresent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's everywhere all at once. Mm-hmm. He was that before the movie came out, you yeah. know, everywhere, <laughs> everything all at once. Uh-huh. So, um, so he never leaves you. And I still think that, that he is all around everyone and he is chasing everyone down. It comes down to, do you see or hear his promptings or his sayings? Yes. Because yes. his heart is always restoration. And For sure. right. So in, in, in the old Testament, which always spoke towards Jesus and what he's doing on the cross, like it was finished mm-hmm. on the cross, meaning he died for our past, present and future sins. Mm hmm. Like you, know, uh, unlike Catholicism, you don't have to go and confess to a priest mm-hmm. to have your sins forgiven. Yeah. They li- it literally back on whatever date, tw- you know, Jesus died on the cross. It was finished that day. Mm-hmm. Now, do you confess your sin to somebody when you commit a sin against them? Yes, but this is between you and that person. This is now talking about your heart and how to keep your heart in a healthy posture. This is now about you and Jesus being able to mold and work in you. Yeah. You know, it's no, it's not a question of has God forgiven you? Yeah. That's already been answered That's once it. you've um, submitted to his Lordship, yeah. you know, to say it in a very, you know, churchy way. For sure. Um, so I just want to know that they're clear that even when you're, you're struggling in sin, he's right there. He's yeah. literally right there. And the difference from you being able to hear him and not is your heart cry or your heart posture mm-hmm. like after that sin do you want to keep doing that yeah are you are you going to him you know what i yeah, mean like yeah. oh i blew it again or oh i slipped again or oh this is really you know this is hard god like i'm about to slip like are you including him in your struggle or exactly. in your journey yes yes yeah. are you being open with it so it's not hidden because mm-hmm. we know it's not hidden from him you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah um, and the reason we're talking about this again is because I think it affects our sensitivity mm-hmm. to hear him. Yes. Um, yeah, and if I had to give an example, I think it's, I would compare this to you can, your children can be talking to you. If you have your earphones in, you might can hear them slightly, but you can't fully hear them because something else has occupied your hearing space. Yeah. And I think it's the same way in our relationship with God, like with, distraction as well whether the the distraction is sin or just life's life's distraction god can be speaking with you but if you are filling your ears with other things versus shifting your ears to hear to actually like let me take this out and let me hear what you have to say like i'm in a posture now i can clearly hear you versus like you're trying to do both like i want to hear this but i'm huh Huh? I'm saying, huh? And he's speaking, yeah. but I can't hear because it's blocked by this. Or you have one earphone in and you're still listening to whatever you were listening to while trying to listen to the, him yes. or your kid. You're yes. like, ah, I can hear two things at once. What? You yeah. Know? So the access is there, but we, we determine what, what we receive, what, I guess what benefits we receive could be because he's given them freely. It's like, I have you as a friend, right? But if every time you call me to hang out, I make excuses, I don't get to receive all the benefits that comes along with oh, being in fellowship yeah, yeah, or yeah. friendship with you. If every time you're like, come away with me and you feel the Holy Spirit, like giving you like, oh, to read your word, but you keep like 
oh, I'll do it later. I'll, I'm, I'm washing dishes right now. Oh, I'm doing this right now. If you keep on, you know, you don't get to enjoy the benefits. Uh, that At some point, in. he's going to say, okay, but I'm right here when you need me. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you over to that. You go ahead and do that. No. Nah, it's so right scary here. when you keep saying, I'll give you over to that. Yeah, because it is. It's, I know. I know. But it's just so scary to hear that. No, but that's, it's the reality of what happened. <laughs> I'm just being but, honest. Yeah, because no, every it is. time I read scriptures like that, and then he gave them over to the depravities or whatever, I'm like, that's freaking harsh, man. And that's the thing I pray. Like sometimes with but, things but, I'm struggling but, with, I'm but like, but what about the gospel? Lord, don't give me over to it. Yeah, I, I Lord, don't give me over. I'm, I, is that fear? Lord. Like, no, I think it's a healthy fear because okay. if you never think that, you, if you just think that you could do whatever you want, then there's almost an arrogance in like, in like. Oh, he's going to be all right back there. But if you know that there's stakes, as you would say, <laughs> there's stakes. You there know, is stakes. You know, then I think it's a that's when they say the fear of the Lord, that that's a piece yeah, of work it. out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. Like that's a piece of it to know that I can get if I quench this Holy Spirit long enough, I can be given over to the things that I'm submit freely submitting to. <sighs> OK, so Tricia. So since we're talking about this, I'm debating <laughs> Um, well, the people on the video can see me like being bashful right here, say but it, I, I am, it, it. <laughs> I am debating on sharing something, but I, I don't know if it's the right time or the right audience or, or if I should do, but it share is a it. perfect example. I'm uh, all like, share it. I know you want the tea. Give me all the tea. You're going to help someone else. I'm going to help someone else. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> I got to work up to this. There's no judgment. I'm starting it's to get freedom. all shaky. No. <laughs> Do you know what I'm going to say? I don't. Okay. I'm guessing. Okay. Well, you know. So, okay. okay. <sighs> this is like confessional. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you're watching this, you right there, if you're listening to this, take off your judgy pants. Take them off. Take them off. Or I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> um, so one of the things that I have struggled with since probably I didn't realize it when I was a kid. Um, okay. So I, I'm going to say the word struggle just because there are seasons I know and you're times. Gonna say and don't feel pressured, but it, be led by the spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, because I think this is a, a, this is a clear view of how to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. Okay, is that I at times, so I guess I'm just going to label myself as always because this is something that I have to constantly work through, um, is, uh, <laughs> dude, this is hard, man. Yeah. But I struggle with um, same-sex attraction. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just said it out loud. You said it out loud. I just said it out loud. And you've just now freed yourself and exposed the enemy yeah. and helped some other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I, I know that can be a hard to, s um, but I, uh, like I have been married for how long have I been married? A lot, like to a male for like 20, 18 years. We've been dating for like 25. Um, uh, we're happily married. I have yeah. six kids. Sick. It seems kind of funny that I could struggle with same sex attraction. Yeah. And I, I don't know. So, it's there, real. Yeah, it's real. So we're not going to, maybe we can do a whole episode on that. But this mm -hmm. is an example of, um, like, I know my triggers. Um, I I know the things that I just can't do mm -hmm. because I don't want to be introduced to any sort of, like, new temptation. Yeah. I can healthily have a relationship with, a, yeah. with another female. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yeah. I have not been overcome by it. And I'm not ugly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. <laughs> You're not. Um <laughs> Yeah. But what happened was I literally I could tell that there was a war clearly raging inside of me mm -hmm. and I had to choose my relationship with Jesus over the gratification of my flesh even though the world Ancient keeps good. screaming a different thing. Yes. Um and so I felt the stakes in mm -hmm. my relationship with Jesus. And there are times where I've been better at it. And mm -hmm. there are times when I have not. Now for me, it's, it's easier now that I'm married because mm -hmm. I made a commitment to my husband, Yes, yeah. you know, with my heart, with my mind and with my body. And so the stakes are a little bit higher now, but sometimes when you have tighter boundaries, it's easier to stay in those boundaries. Mm -hmm. So my heart goes out to, to Christian women who struggle with same sex attraction or men, or, mm -hmm. or men. well, mm -hmm. I'm a female, so I'm, I'm saying I, I yeah. you know, it's mm -hmm. easier for me to anyway. Um, man, I was on a roll. 
Go ahead. <laughs> um, where the boundaries of of a marriage aren't there yet. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and so there you you know your pasture is bigger. You have you have more freedom. You know, mm-hmm. m- more opportunity. I guess. Um, and so, but still, I have had to work out with fear and trembling, pushing not pushing down the flesh, but saying, yeah, cool. That's cool that you are feeling that way or that you think that. But I have chosen to live how Jesus calls me to live. So we're going to set that aside. And it is straight up delayed gratification. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's, I (laughs) love, I'm so grateful that you are willing to be transparent and share that because there are so many people who are struggling in that way and they feel like there's something wrong with them or they feel like they're not good enough or they struggle with all these issues of like even self hate because they're struggling with that. But the reality is we're all struggling with something. Yeah. Everyone's struggle is different. That's just one way to struggle. But everybody is struggling with something that we have to surrender or submit to the Lord. Like we're something or stuff, something that we have to submit or surrender to the Lord, you know, because I I think about the person that's struggling with maybe adultery, the person that's struggling with a sex addiction or a porn addiction or or a drug addiction or an alcohol addiction or um, just addiction to our phone. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. Like at times my, my, my struggle, my main struggle is distraction, you know? (laughs) And there's times where I can feel the Holy spirit, like, okay, you have things to do. You have this. And it's like, okay, Lord, Oh, I'm giving over to it. And it's really a fight and it's a battle, Yeah, you know, but we all struggle with something that we have to submit to the Lord, something that's going to bring us some form of satisfaction or, or, or pleasure that the Lord is saying, no, this isn't healthy for where I called you to be. And we have to submit to what the Lord is saying over what our flesh is trying to tell us. Exactly. And, oh my gosh. And the belief that when he returns and we're in heaven, that the pleasure that we're going to feel in heaven, where there's no more tears, there's no more hurt, there's no more sorrow is, is, going to is like 10 billion times better than any earthly pleasure we could feel yes again that's the ultimate delayed gratification yes yeah you know yeah and so i love what you're saying about occupying that space it's like i just pretended like the frame freezed so i could like edit it but <laughs> It's not me. The, I love it froze. <laughs> That's hilarious. I was, I was there with you too. I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just want to see if you were hanging on every word while I find where the heck I thought went. You got me. <laughs> I was like, it's in there. <laughs> yeah. No, I was saying uh, our sensitivity and rele- in relevation to our focus, mm-hmm. meaning that our focus It can always be on God. Yes. Like uh, that sounds exhausting when you say it out loud. How the heck does anybody, how can you focus on God? Like, how can you focus on God when you're having sex? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How can you focus on God when you're trying to parent your kids or like win a rugby game? Right. In in, in my sense. Mm -hmm. But I think you can, because Mm -hmm. if you're like, like, seriously, I would be running with the rugby ball and I would be praying. I would like, Lord, give me the strength to reach the try zone. <laughs> you know, after I get tackled and the ball's down, it's like, Lord, give me the strength to keep playing. <laughs> right. So what? I'm like, lean- and I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, I'm like yes. leaning on him. And then like, um, I don't know why we keep talking about sex, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like sometimes even even during sex because you know it's it's all a head game mm-hmm. with us ladies right it's a head game <laughs> and so i i just be like lord thank you so much for giving me this man yeah um and and his ability to love me with all my flaws like i'll just be grateful for the gift that he gave me yeah and then but i've i literally god was involved it's in that act of worship exactly all, and when yeah. i'm parenting my kids i'm like lord give me the give me the strength not to kill them yeah. <laughs> you, you know what i'm <laughs> yes, saying yes god you've given me the tools to raise these kids so it's not it's not so o- overtly obvious yeah. it's just Again, a mind posture. You know, we always talk about this heart posture, right? Mm-hmm. What about a mind posture? And what you what you fill your mind with determines the posture that your mind would be in. If every day, if I'm struggling with uh, masturbation, if I'm struggling with that, and I'm everything I'm watching has sex scenes in it, everything I'm watching that's probably not has, a good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good idea. I'm filling myself with these things that are making me struggle more. Yeah. But if I'm adding God into like 
Like one, we, nobody can, well, some people, maybe if they're not employed, can just be in the presence of God, like in prayer and worship all day, every day. Cause the reality is you got a parent, you got to work, you got to do these, you know, normal yeah. life routines and things. But if we bring him along with us, it keeps him at the forefront. It keeps our focus. It keeps us in a posture to be able to hear from him. Exactly. If the things well, I'm and a listening, big giant hint, he's already there. Yeah. <laughs> but if the things I'm listening to are things that point me in the direction of God, I'm positioning myself to hear him more because now that I'm listening to a podcast that they're talking about some principle or something that has to do with the Bible or God, there's an opportunity for God to speak through them. If the people I'm, I'm, I'm speak, choosing to be on the phone with mm -hmm. are other believers, there's an opportunity for them to speak a word into my life. If the shows that I'm watching, if the conversations and the music that I'm listening to, if I'm incorporating him in even the smallest things in my life, I'm providing more opportunities for him to speak. I'm posturing myself in a position to, to, to hear because hear, he's because he's talking. Yeah. Well, unless he's not talking, but then he's telling you I'm being quiet. But yeah, he still, but, but he still day, speaks through his word. I think when his when he's quiet, he for sure. But if all day I'm listening to the gossip tea pages or the this kind of song about this other stuff, if I'm constantly positioning myself to hear from the world or what the world has to say, then I'm probably I probably got the earphone in and it's hard to hear him speak. But totally. if throughout the the day, the way I move provides opportunities for him. I'm posturing myself to hear from him more. So the question I guess is n not how to, he is like, not does God speak, but it is, are you listening? Yeah. Are you positioned to hear? <sighs> yes. Are the, you positioned here? Because okay. 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 But the word position, <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, no, no. it's, it's just, cause it's a posture. Well, it is a posture, but I, if I'm hearing you, I'm here. But if I'm like, this this is not the posture. but then some people are going to think that if they're not in a posture to hear him they're going to label what it looks like to be in a posture and we're saying a, a what we mean by posture is that providing opportunities for you're, him you're you're seeking him i guess yeah. even in the mundane moments yeah and it's not complicated i know we're making this sound super complicated it's not because it's, it's not. how can i get how can you hand me your phone if my hand is not out if I have my hands here. But I could start handing you my phone and you could bring your hand out. If I'm not posture, I, I have to get in posture. <laughs> yeah, but I'm still I speaking. think God's always handing the phone out. And if Oh, uh, okay, there we go. So his posture is the cross. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, no. His posture, his posture is the resurrection. Oh, see, now we're okay. This was not in the show notes. It this wasn't. Is free, this is freestyling. <laughs> this is not in the show notes. <laughs> this is off script. <laughs> totally. Give me a beat. We're freestyling. <laughs> wait, 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 we got something. Okay. Let's think. Let's get back on track. Uh, uh, posture. Hear okay. from God. He'll Hearing speak. from God. Hearing from God. Dear God. Uh, speak. Let Lord. us hear from you so speak. we can talk to these people speak, right now. Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. I want to hear from you. Okay. <laughs> now, Sadie, what were you saying? So <laughs> No, but, um, but yeah, I think it's just uh, the simplest form. It's allowing space for God to speak, whether it's allowing yes. space I, and I being love, silent, I love that. allowing space and feeding ourselves things that provide opportunity for him to speak. Um, what is it? Philippians four, eight. You even just mentioned this. I think, I don't know if it was in this episode or last week's episode that, um, to think on these things, yeah, things that are, yeah. uh, right, mm -hmm. noble, true, trustworthy. Yeah. Um, I'm misquoting it, but whatever is pure, verse, whatever is holy. Yeah. yeah whatever is pure, whatever is holy, what is, yeah. Um, it's almost like you put that filter on as your consumption filter. Yes. So if you, um, <laughs> follow that then mm -hmm. you can know <laughs> that you're in a position to hear yeah. from god no that's I real and obviously we can't put god in a box and so if he wants to talk to somebody who's like just outrageously doing something he's mm -hmm. gonna shout from the heavens yeah. he's gonna talk to them like paul Be exactly right? he blinded him yeah <laughs> just walking around on an ass and then he knocked him over <laughs> well it's true it's in the bible now you get they're gonna put the uh the age restriction on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is not for kids. <laughs> but yeah. No. I said that for spiritual emphasis. Okay. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, no. And then. Because also, also, because I know we're talking about this posture in a, in a good way. What's that verse we just had? I think it's like Ephesians 430, where it yeah, talks about grieving the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Wait, Let's I think it was Ephesians 5. No, 4. four. It was 4. It was 4. 
Yeah, four thirty. You're right. Um, it says, and and do not bring sorrow. Oh, you want me to do the NIV? <laughs> yes. No more uh, King James Shakespeare version. <laughs> Go away, Romeo. <laughs> so in Psalms in thirty, it says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And if I can, can I add the? I like the passion too. Oh yeah, go for it. Go for it. It says, uh, the passion says, the Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. So never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted his holy influence in your life. Oh, snap. I love that. Some people are like, what the heck does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? For a long time, I had absolutely no idea Me here. Too. So what it means to grieve the Holy Spirit is to act in a way that's contrary to God's will and character. Mm -hmm. such as engaging in sinful behavior, harboring bitterness, and resisting God's guidance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we know that the Holy Spirit is, once we accept Christ, is indwelled in us, yeah. you know? Ooh. And so we literally have a part of God in us. The Holy Spirit is there doing its thing, helping us work out our salvation and fear and trembling, Man. helping us through our temptations, yeah. you know, trying to get us before we sin. But even when we sin saying, Hey, 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 you know, yeah. fueling out that mercy and that grace. Um, you gave a, your not to bring this up again, but your example was so perfect because imagine if you ignored the, the unctioning of the Holy Spirit in you that's like, mm, this is not right, or mm, I don't want you to do that. And you just gave over to, you know what I mean? Yes. The desire that, you know, your flesh oh, felt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so here is a little that's bit. so good. A little bit more about that story and why it's good to keep that mind posture on God so that you that you can be sure that you've heard him, you know, so that you're in a position to um, mm -hmm. hear him. Your sensitivity is very sensitive mm -hmm. um, is when I graduated high school, I actually got a scholarship to go play rugby in Illinois. Yeah. It was uh, the, uh, Eastern Illinois university It's really cool. It's a really big castle in, in the middle of cornfields, <laughs> um, but to go play rugby and I flew down there, you know, they, they do the whole recruiting thing. And I was like, yes, but what scared me is that, and I, and I, and I love these people, so I'm not speaking bad, but the culture of, of rugby players cultivated um a, a lot of the i don't know how you say it but lesbian. just <clears throat> a lot of the you know a lot of the lesbian culture yeah a kind of a lot like sometimes softball is mm -hmm. seen not that i'm labeling softball as that i'm just yeah. saying that that there it's more found in these spaces or it, it's common it's common exactly in these spaces. and so this is what scared the crap out of me I was dating Matt at the time, but I was really struggling with my sexual identity. Um, and to leave a secure home and a safe environment where I knew that there was people that loved me and I could just be there to f figure stuff out and to go live by myself in the middle of the country playing rugby with college people and in a lifestyle surrounded by people in a lifestyle that I was tempted by yeah that i was curious about you're, you're talking good keep pre you're preaching you're helping somebody sorry i'm seriously taking a tour of, of the college and this is going through my mind i mm -hmm. literally in that moment felt like i was choosing emily are you gonna be a bisexual or a lesbian whatever one i didn't know which one yet or are you gonna choose to live for me hmm. and so you want to know what what i turned down the scholarship Wow. I did not go to the university and I did not play rugby. Yeah. I actually stayed home and went to film school in Seattle, married my husband and haven't looked back. Yes. But there was a defining moment yeah. where if I had not been sensitive and I had just been like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, I'm getting offered a scholarship to play at a university. Yeah, you know, this is the Holy Spirit. clearly this is God's will. Yeah, he you know, wants me to have favor. Exactly. <laughs> Um, the decision was so different. I feel like I was, I had the ability to see the deeper, the, yeah. the deeper, what was, what this choice really was. Yes. This was a choice to give into my flesh and to live this way, which is my choice. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that God was like, this is your choice. Here's the stakes, Emily. Mm -hmm. 
You yeah. can do this or you can do this. Because he's a gentleman. He's not forcing you. Exactly. He gave yeah. me a choice. Yeah. And I chose the mystery of his purpose in my life. Yeah. And someday, you know, and so. I'm all like. Applause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but that's the importance of the sensitivity. Yeah. And <sighs> not to. This is so good because a lot of us are so deceived and we think an open door automatically mean that it's God's will. Yes. And that's why it is so important that we stay in a posture. Right. To hear from the Holy Spirit. A continual word. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Because something that can look or appear good, the Holy Spirit, as he leads us and guides us, He's directing us for what the best, best, the best, the the best path. (laughs) He's leading and guiding us for the best path for our life. And if we quench the Holy Spirit, if we quench his influence, you know, if we don't, you know, if we're not open to hear the influence of the Holy Spirit, we can be deceived by decisions that appear to be good. And our motives can be good in taking the decision, but it's the, the path that's going to lead us into struggle, into addiction, or into whatever, yeah. into yeah. these things that don't provide us the lifestyle that God wants us to have in freedom and in peace and in joy. Totally. And all those things. And you want to know what's awesome? Is that there is physical and mental benefits for hearing God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. It actually reduces stress. Yeah. It reduces depression. Yes. And it gives you this overall, um, yes. just overall mental wellness because yeah. you, um, you're like giving up control in a sense. Yes. You don't have to figure it out. Exactly. You don't have to have all the answers. Exactly. And there's literal like studies, yes. studies on this that it actually helps you yeah. mentally. It takes the and pressure it, off. Exactly. And it negates the the stress, the physical stressness or negative stress that your body will take. Yes. Isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. It's but like, that's so real. This I is know. so good. Oh, I know. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> One way I can tell if I've been quenching the Holy Spirit or I haven't been posturing myself to hear from the Lord is when I start getting overwhelmed because then it shows me that I'm now trying to figure it out on my own and I'm trying to determine what I should be doing based off my own knowledge instead of submitting it to God so that's one of the telltale signs for me yeah when I'm like because if you're overwhelmed that clearly means that you have your hand in either too many pots or you're trying to take control which isn't yours to have in too many pots yes because if I've given if I've surrendered and submitted to the Holy Spirit's leading and to hearing him, then it's not going to cause me like a, Oh no, this, this, and that, because the consequences are not on me because I'm following the Holy Spirit. It's like, Nope, the the Lord led me over here versus I'm struggling with making the right decision because it's me making the decision. It's not me following the Holy Spirit. And I, I will say this to that is that I believe that God honors, um, action. Yeah. Meaning if you, you think you heard from God and you mm-hmm. take action mm-hmm. in thinking that you heard from God, I yeah. think he still honors that yes. and he's God enough and he's big enough to be like, that's awesome. Thanks for having the boldness to do that. But mm-hmm. nah, wrong. how about wrong way? Let's, let's move you over here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I don't even think he would say wrong way. I think it would be like, um, we're going to go this way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're just stuck in indecision, like, uh, 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 mm-hmm. I, I don't think that, I don't think that's a hell. Get out of that. Yeah. <laughs> no, because God knows your heart and he knows that you move. Now you you're just moved. living in fear. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's okay to fail. Yes. I mean, this is true in life and this is true in the spiritual life as well. It's okay to fail yes. because you learn in that uncomfortableness yes. and it humbles you. And then you get up and you try and fail again. We should get a sign <laughs> right here that says, uh, you know how in, in in warehouses, they have a sign that says, uh, like 392 days without injury. Oh, funny. Yeah. You'd be like, Two <laughs> seconds funny. without sin. No, uh-huh. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny. But you know, through, I think a part of my development in this area, because this was a struggle for me, I would be, um, I guess in fear or like fear of making the wrong decision, I would not get started or not do certain things that I know God placed on my heart to do because I would be so afraid of, of, not like mishearing God or getting it wrong. Yes. And I think 
these last couple of years, God's been showing me to just go because if, if he's placed it in my heart, if I'm not doing it correct, he'll, he'll lead me. And a part of this is doing this podcast with you. You were just kind of like, Oh, let's do it. If you know, God's called you to, to do this, then let's do it. And if somewhere along the line, he's leading us elsewhere, he'll lead us in those paths, but let's not, not do it because yeah. we're afraid of making the wrong decision. So that's one thing that you're helping and helping to sharpen in me because I'm glad to be a part of that. I, before, like literally, there's so many things that God's placed on my heart. And for years, I would not do them because I would be so afraid. Like, Did I really hear from God? I want to make sure that it's God. I, like I would. At some over- point, you just got to do it and then say, was this from you? Look, I was so <laughs> afraid to fall that I was becoming inactive. I was so afraid to <sighs> fall or to miss God that I, I would do nothing. Do you think that's almost a sense of turning your mind posture from hearing from God? Because he keeps saying it, but you but you're not doing what he's saying. You're resisting like Jonah. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. The talents is the, the scriptures that always, when it, someone buried it, I'm like, for years, oh. I was the one burying it. Cause I was like, Oh no, I don't like, they were like in fear of like losing the, whatever I buried it so I can have, but he's like the same gifts and abilities I've placed inside of you. You're burying them because you're afraid that you will miss me and that I will be angry with you or you'll miss me and, you know, have some yeah. negative result in your life instead of trusting me and saying, I'm going to use all you, I'm going to invest what you've, you've given me and I'm going to trust you for the return, you know? Yeah. 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 And so that's, that's a way that he's helping me. I'm still getting delivered from that. So I'm not talking like I got, <laughs> you're still, still working that fear of trembling, but he's using you to help me in a okay. lot of ways. Yeah. That's awesome. For sure. Well, let's wrap it up with this, ladies. I know this was a tantalizing conversation, at least for me. At least for me. No, this was good. And I feel like, ladies, we've gotten a lot closer because I just like opened up my soul and shared with you my deep, dark. Well, it's not a secret, but I haven't, you know, I have not publicly shared that. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I did write a book. It is in the book, but probably only like 50 people bought it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wait, I need to buy the book. I didn't know that. It's called Untold. By Until Emily Roth. You got to put a link to put it a in link. the description. Oh, jeez. Yes. Anyway, um, so yeah, so this was a great day for all of us. Amazing. Um, I wanted to shout and run around the room. <laughs> I wanted to. This was good. This was freeing. This was good. I still yeah. like feel like, whoo. Anyway, yeah. well, I was brave. I do brave things. So booyah, sucker. Yeah. Okay, so. Clo- You're part of the family now. <laughs> You're part of the family. So closing, what should we say to them in closing? One. One. God is near you. Yes. Two, God is for you. And three, just God listen. God speaks in different ways. God speaks in different ways. Let's posture ourselves to be in a position to hear from him. Let's provide more opportunities for him to speak to us, you know, through what, how we invest our time and what we what we fill our mind with. Let's provide more opportunities for him to speak. And then let's also not judge ourselves to think that, because we're so horrible, he's not speaking. He is speaking, you know, and yeah. let's not limit the ways that we can hear from him. As well. oh, and this last little nugget, if you can't hear from him, I challenge you this, go back into the la- and, and, and if you can, to the last thing he told you to do. Yes. And ask yourself, what did I do about it? Yes. So as really my husband good. would always say, what is God saying to you? And what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And if you don't feel like you're hearing from him, go back to the first question. What is God saying to you? Yeah. What did God say to you? Yep. And have you done it? Yeah. There we go. That's really good. I know my husband is amazing. He is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> All right, well, ladies, we love you. We We'd love, love to you. hear from you. Um, until next week. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs> How do we turn this thing off? Thanks for listening or watching to the Messy Faith Podcast. Go ahead and like and subscribe. And hey, check out our latest video.